Kia EV6, Polestar 2, Mustang Mach-E, Tesla Model S Plaid, Nissan Aria, Porsche Taycan, and the new Hyundai Ioniq 6, all electric cars that we're gonna be using in this video to demonstrate the concept of something called regenerative braking. And by the time we're done our time here together, you're gonna to know everything there is to know about it. Regenerative braking can sound pretty complicated, but it's actually a straightforward concept that's super interesting to learn about. And by the end of this video, you'll know what it is, how it works, and a bunch of interesting things about it. But let's kick this voyage off with a recap of how conventional braking systems work. Put simply, pressing the brake pedal builds hydraulic pressure, which causes your brake calipers to squeeze your brake pads against the rapidly spinning brake rotors, generating a tremendous amount of friction, which does the work of slowing down your car. Friction is used to turn kinetic energy into heat, and there is a lot of heat, which contains a lot of energy that's all wasted as it dissipates into the environment. The braking systems in high-performing cars are designed to make that happen as quickly as possible, since too much heat is the enemy of braking performance. As heat is flushed out of your car's braking system by the air flowing through it, a lot of energy is just leaving the system. What if a car could recapture some of that wasted energy, turning it into, say, electricity instead of heat? Well, that's just what hybrid and electric cars do by taking advantage of their electric motors. In a hybrid or electric car, one or more electric motors are connected to the wheels, and the electric motors draw electricity from the battery and turn it into torque, driving those wheels as you cruise or accelerate. In a hybrid, the electric motors are a means of reducing the workload of the gas engine, saving fuel. In an electric, the motors are the sole propulsion source of the vehicle. The addition of electric motors to a vehicle driveline unlocks another ability, regenerative braking. In a hybrid or electric, the motors can be used to do some of the work of slowing down the vehicle while simultaneously recharging its battery. In this way, the electric motors are used to help recover a portion of the energy that would otherwise be lost as heat while braking. Here's how that works. When slowing down or braking, the wheels of your vehicle aren't being driven by its driveline. The wheels are still spinning though, and those spinning wheels can drive the electric motors, turning them into generators that create electricity to store in the battery. So when you're pressing the throttle, the electric motor applies power to the wheels, and when you release the throttle, or release the throttle and press the brakes, the spinning action of the wheels drive the motors as generators instead. All right, so Nissan Aria rolling down the highway here. This is Nissan's latest all-electric. I'm cruising at more or less a steady speed. The motors are sending power to the wheels, driving me along. Here's some footage. But when I slow down, either coasting or braking, each of those spinning wheels becomes a source of free energy. They're spinning fast, but they're not receiving power. So in a moment, the motor becomes a generator, and that generator is driven by those wheels. This is an ongoing and continual process. So how does regenerative braking slow the vehicle down? According to Ingo Albers, Porsche's head of chassis development in Wysock, electric motors can generally be controlled in four-quadrant operation. The motor can work with both the rotation speed and torque running in the same or positive direction, but each electric motor can also function as a generator, in which case the motor continues to turn in the same direction but is now powered by the wheels, rather than powering the wheels itself. According to Albers, this generates electrical energy rather than consuming it, and because it takes a lot of energy to power the motor, and thus turn the rotor against magnetic resistance, this negative torque can be used to brake the vehicle. So whether you're driving a Bolt, a Taycan, an Outlander plug-in hybrid, a Leaf, a Polestar 2, or an Ionic 6, the principle is the same. The electric motor can drive your wheels one moment, and be driven by those wheels the next, generating electricity in the process. According to Porsche, kinetic braking energy increases twice as fast as speed, so double the speed means four times the recuperation. When braking from 100 km an hour, the Taycan generates four times as much energy as when braking from 50 km an hour. But how much does regenerative braking help? Well, according to various automakers, the answer is a lot. In something like an all-electric Porsche Taycan or this all-electric Nissan Aria, around 90% of your day-to-day -day braking is 100% electric, allowing the vehicle to recover a lot of energy. 
according to experts from Nissan, Hyundai, and various other automakers. Regenerative braking is used approximately 90% of the time during day-to-day -day driving. Julian Chang of Hyundai Canada says that in a real-world city cycle, regenerative braking could improve the range of your vehicle by up to 40%, though several variables are in play including driving style, how much brake pressure is applied, and external variables encountered while driving day-to-day. -day. Kia Canada's National Manager of Training, Reg Furoy, says that regenerative braking is a key part of maximizing range and there can be a great benefit when used properly in optimal conditions. According to Furoy, all systems are computer controlled and monitor driver inputs, regeneration mode, battery state of charge and health, and will react accordingly to maximize power and battery charge functions. How quickly can an electric motor switch between motor and generator? According to Hyundai, switching is almost instantaneous, up to a few hundred milliseconds to microseconds depending on the individual motor speed. Nissan Canada tells me that theoretically the switch is instant by just reversing energy flow between the battery, inverter, and motor. The engineering team at Polestar Cars tells me the torque of the electric motor is controlled via an electrical magnetic field and can switch from positive torque to negative torque in milliseconds. According to Polestar Cars, with this you can create direction of the vehicle, acceleration, and regenerative braking. The rotor is the moving part of the motor spinning inside of the stator and it's connected via a shaft to a reduction gear set and then to the drive shafts and ultimately the wheels. But what happens in an emergency stop? Although regenerative braking can cover most of your braking in day-to-day -day driving, there are still situations where your conventional brakes need to kick into action. According to Porsche's Ingo Albers, in extreme situations such as full braking from top speed in a fully loaded Taycan, a maximum braking capacity of more than 2 megawatts must be applied. The electric powertrain can't do that by itself, meaning the conventional brakes are applied to a higher degree. Hyundai's Julian Cheng tells me conventional braking is the majority at very low speed, or when more brake torque is required than what's available from the motor. For instance, in emergency stops, low traction conditions, and while the vehicle is at rest in iPedal or auto hold mode, all of these situations will use conventional braking. According to Nissan Canada, regenerative braking is prioritized and conventional braking takes over in scenarios like when a driver demands more stopping power than what regenerative brakes can apply. Brakes are also an integral part of traction control, especially on slippery surfaces. And according to Nissan's Reg Furoy, regenerative braking slows the vehicle down as it recharges, however, it cannot stop the vehicle in an emergency or hold the vehicle when on a hill or at a stop sign. According to the Polestar engineering team, regenerative braking has limitations in terms of performance, battery temperature, and state of charge. In the Polestar 2, regenerative braking can handle about 0.3 Gs, and emergency braking needs more than 1 G. With the 0.3 G limit, more than 95% of all customer braking can be handled with regeneration, but the extra torque from the friction brakes is required for hard and sporty driving, emergency braking, and when the battery is full or doesn't have sufficient temperature to charge. How does regenerative braking work on snow and ice? According to Polestar, in terms of road surface, regenerative braking is working until the point you lose grip and then friction brakes are used for compensation and stabilization when needed. So to put that another way, regenerative braking can slow the vehicle to within the limits of traction, at which point conventional anti-lock braking is blended into the mix of forces that are working to slow the vehicle down. There are benefits for sporty drivers on snow and ice too. According to Polestar, EV motors, if tuned for it, also react without delay when releasing the accelerator, regenerating energy back into the battery. This gives an effect similar to left foot braking, quick vehicle weight shift control. Since the distribution of this braking effect between the axles can be tuned, its effect on the way the vehicle drives can be tailored further. It adds an extra dimension in car control. You choose your preferred level in the one-pedal drive settings, and with a low center of gravity, drivers get a nice starting point to achieve a natural balance. Can bigger motors or more motors recover more energy? According to Hyundai Canada, in theory, a larger motor may recover more energy. However, there are other considerations for energy capture. For instance, according to Hyundai's Julian Cheng, if the motor power is larger than the allowable battery input power, we can only recapture as much energy as the battery is able to accept. Nissan Canada's Christopher Belletta adds, Larger EV motors can recapture more energy than smaller ones, but it's not quite that cut and dry. 
This makes the transition to conventional brakes more difficult and harms drivability. The two-motor EV can make stronger regenerative braking, but considering drivability, the Aria has the same regenerative brake capacity. Therefore, most EVs limit regen braking forces to lower than 0.2G, even with a larger motor. That's the case for both the Nissan LEAF and Aria. Is regenerative braking AC or DC? According to Reg Furoy of Kia Canada, regenerative braking is AC generated by the motor and then sent to a converter to be changed to DC to charge the batteries. Can regenerative braking be turned off? For instance, in models like the Hyundai Ioniq 6, Nissan Aria, and Kia EV6 or Soul EV, the level of regenerative braking can be adjusted by the driver on the fly. Specifically, this alters the way the vehicle responds when the accelerator is released. In models like the Ionic 6 or EV6, drivers can use paddles on the steering wheel to toggle between various levels of regeneration. In the lowest of these, the vehicle will just coast when the accelerator is released, and as the levels increase, the vehicle slows more and more aggressively when the accelerator is released instead. In the most aggressive setting, even lightly releasing pressure from the accelerator has an effect similar to a good stomp on the brakes. In this mode, just a few inches of change in the accelerator position can see the car go from full throttle to heavy braking with no need to touch the actual brake pedal. The Nissan Aria allows drivers to engage enhanced regenerative braking at the touch of a button using the E-Step function. It toggles on and off immediately at the touch of a button. With E-Step on, releasing the Aria's accelerator slows the vehicle more quickly. With E-Step off, releasing the accelerator just sees the vehicle coast. In the Polestar 2, drivers can select their desired level of regenerative braking from the vehicle's command system. And in the Chevrolet Bolt, a system called Regen On Demand is used. Press the throttle to accelerate, lift to coast, and when you want to slow down a bit more without getting onto the brake pedal, pulling a steering wheel mounted paddle engages additional regenerative braking to slow you down faster while recharging the battery. Thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe. So we can fold this top piece down. It gives us some space for cargo that might be sticking out the back here. Or we can fold it down this way like a regular tailgate. Flip this up and we have sort of a bed extender type setup here. In this configuration, you can also have a workstation or standing desk set up right here up on the top. Or, and this is my favorite, open this one, then open this one, and then open this one. And we've got a handy tailgate step, so easier access to uh, the cargo bed. Just walk right up.